Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm going to talk about some Blu-rays I picked up recently. Um, I think I did one of these a couple weeks ago, but I got another one. And uh, excuse my crazy hair. I just took a shower and it always takes like an hour or so. It likes to do its own thing before I can go in and tame it, so whatever. But I'll do um, a TBR, To Be Read, books I'm planning on reading. This will be the last one of this year, probably. We only have a like a week and a half left of this year or something like that. I don't, I don't know what, di what day it is. Um, but yeah, I just have two, uh, from the recent ones I picked up. I still have a number of books to read, so that's, that's good. I, 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 do, I do have more time now to read though, which is nice. Um, I did get this book, which I sunk a little bit into called Isolation, the horror anthology. Uh, Dan Coxon was the editor and this is a, um, this is a, a um, anthology book of short stories by horror authors. And as you can see, um, Paul Tremblay's in there, one of my favorite uh, current horror authors, really like his stuff, um, and uh, so, uh, some other authors that I uh, I don't really know most of them, to be honest with you. Um, oh, Laird Barron's in here, um, and uh, who's the first one? I can't remember. Uh, Alison Littlewood. I've read a couple of her things, and it's good stuff, but obviously all dealing with the theme of isolation, but I did get this as a gift. Uh, my work was doing Secret Santa, and I got this, and that's... Wonderful. I think I mentioned last year I got an Anne Rule book for Secret Santa, so super cool. Um, yeah, can't wait to read it. Um, and the other final book that I'm probably going to get this year, because I, I don't need to get any more, I have enough that I need to read, is Nosferatu by, or Nosferatu, I don't know how to pronounce it, N-O-S-4-A-2, by Joe Hill. Um, paperback, uh, there's no, hard, you know me, I like uh, hardcovers generally. I don't mind paperbacks so much, um, but... Uh, there, there was no uh, hardcover of this that I could find used that wasn't like 60 bucks. So I just got this. Also, one of the reasons I hate paperbacks, look how this showed up. It's just like kind of wavy and I don't know, I'll have to try to flatten it out. But yeah, um, I, I don't know anything about this book, although I did read 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. Um, his short story collection that has the black phone in it. And it's really good writing, really good stuff. And um I heard this has something to do with Christmas. I'm not even going to read the back um, the back blurb. I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to go into it. Um, I just know there's something about Christmas land in here. And a lot of horror um, book, book YouTubers I watch said that they like to read it every year around Christmas time. So I thought, I don't know if I've ever read a horror Christmas novel. So yeah. So let's get into the Blu-rays. Uh, one DVD here. I did mention this. Oh my God, my hair. The cons of having long hair... And having a lot of it, it does whatever it wants. Um, yeah, also, excuse my voice, I've been very under the weather lately. It's just, yeah, I'm getting getting over it, though. Um, I talked about Johnny Dangerously in my last video, um, but I didn't show it off because I don't think I, I, I knew where it was. But, yeah, I just picked this up on DVD. This is a, a, a really funny movie starring Michael Keaton and Joe Piscopo from 84, I think. Yeah, 84. And it's just a parody of, like, gangster movies. Um, it's, like, kind of like Mel Brooks. Like, it's very slapstick, very ridiculous. It's a, it's super funny, and I, I watched it, and uh, it's funny. I, I recommend picking it up. I, I don't know if it's out of print or not. Like, I think this is... I think this is actually a used copy that they shrink-wrapped for me, but I don't know. I recommend it. The rest are mostly 4K. Um, we have Elf. On 4K, which I believe just came out, and this is this is a Universal, right? Or who the hell did this? I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Didn't um, or was it Warner Brothers? I can't keep these studios straight, man. It's either Warner Bro I think it was Warner Brothers or, or someone. They, they released a bunch of new 4Ks. Polar Express was in there. I didn't get that one because I don't really care for that movie. But Elf. Elf is a classic Christmas movie. What's more to say? I'm hoping that the 4K is good. I heard it's pretty good. Um, DTS HD 5.1, I believe. Yeah, so no Dolby Atmos, but yeah, looking forward to watching it. Um, next is my favorite Christmas movie of all time. I'm not a big Christmas person, but I sure love this movie, and it's Christmas Story. I don't know why it's always been my favorite. It's that, I don't know, something about it, the 30s setting, 30s, 40s kind of setting. Um, it's just great. It's always been my favorite. I'm one of those people that would watch it when, uh, whatever that she was at TBS or someone would play it 24 hours a day on Christmas. I would watch it. 
over and over, yeah. Um, another 5.1 DTS. I heard that this um, transfer is, like, unbelievable. I heard it's impeccable. It's one of the best transfers. I think uh, Films at Home I was watching said that he thought this was one of the best upgrades he had ever seen in the medium of 4K. So that's very exciting to me, considering this is my favorite film. So I'm super, super excited to watch this in 4K. Um, my, my last 4K, actually I have one more coming, I guess I'll say, that's just not here yet, and that's Christmas Vacation, the 4K, another one of the ones that was released recently. Um, and I love that movie too, and I, I look forward to seeing it in 4K. It's just, for some reason, it's taking a lot longer to get here. And Home Alone on 4K, which I don't know if was released recently? No, 2020, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I love this movie too. Yeah, so I look forward to seeing this in 4K. Uh, I couldn't find Home Alone 2 in 4K, so I don't think that Home Alone 2 uh, is out in 4K, which is a bit odd that they wouldn't release that one. Sometimes I like this one more, and sometimes I like the second one more, Lost in New York, because I like I still love this movie, but I go back and watch it, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's kind of, it's not dated, just like Macaulay Culkin's acting is kind of weak in this one, because he's so young. And I know he's only like two or three years older in the next one, but I felt like the acting was a lot better. And it's kind of just a retread of the first one, but I always almost preferred the second one. You got Tim Curry in there. There's a lot of good stuff. They're both good, though. And my last is a Blu-ray, and it's not a Christmas movie by any means. <laughs> Although, who knows? Some weirdo could make it a tradition. But this is a Shout Fact. Actually, it's a Scream Factory release. And I've been looking at it for a while, and I just bit the bullet on it because I really, really wanted it. And that's Fire in the Sky, which I think came out in 94. 1993, excuse me. Um, just a Blu-ray, but the fact that this is on Blu-ray is great. Um, actually, a pretty cool um, little insert there. Uh, Screen Factory, Shout Factory, they always put out good stuff. You, you know what this is about. Um, if you haven't seen this film, this is a science fiction movie. Kind of, it's it to me. It's like a horror movie. It's pretty pretty frightening at times. Um, I'm not into science fiction really at all. There's not too much science fiction I'm into. Like The Fifth Element, I think is like probably my favorite one. Um, but this is about an alien abduction, and it's based on a book, which is based that this guy wrote based on a true story. Obviously, it's all bullshit, but it makes for a great film. And I don't, I just don't want to spoil it for you because if you haven't seen it and you're okay with horror, watch it. It is the only alien abduction film I've seen, uh, not not counting like some of the great classics, but like of a modern trying to like scare the shit out of you kind of movies. Um, for some reason, it just works for me because it, it's almost realistic. It's not realistic, obviously, what happens, but it's done in a very um, matter of fact, cruel kind of just uh, tell it like it is kind of way. Uh, what happens to this guy and the sequences when he's in the spaceship and everything are fucking awesome. I mean, practical effects are awesome. It's fucking terrifying. It's kind of hard to watch at times, honestly. Um, and I looked and I'm like, it says PG-13. And I'm like, PG-13? <laughs> I am I mean, it's whatever, you know, but I'm, I'm remembering some scenes in this movie that I watched when I was probably too young. And there's some crazy shit in here that I was like, I feel like that's an R-rated, that qualifies for R rating, but it's Fire in the Sky. It's a, it's my favorite alien abduction movie, and it's, it's a crazy one. Uh, that's it, man. Those are the books and the movies I got recently. Uh, let me know what you've got, if you got anything, if you want to watch any of these movies, if you like any of these movies. Um, that's all I'll get, like I said, for movies and books this year. I'll probably do another review for you folks um, before the year's out. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just give you a little teaser. I have another Happy Land, Happy Land Signature Gold. I've been trying this out a little bit, and um, I'll do a review for you probably next week. It smells quite nice. Um, yeah, I'll do a review for you. Um, there is a new Happy Land called Malpaso, I believe, or Malpaso, um, but I haven't picked that one up yet. We'll, we'll get to it eventually. But yeah, happy holidays, everybody. Hope you're doing well, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.